Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. In today's video, I'm excited to share with you one of my favorite little damselfly nymph patterns. I'm going to be using Togan's Curve Nymph Hooks in size 14. I'll be adding Semperfly Straggle String. This is Pale Olive paired with Semper Wire. This is 0.2 millimeter Chartreuse. And then for the tail and body, some Select Marabou Plumes in both Olive and Light Olive. And then for the shell back there, I'll be adding some scud back uh, with a little bit of semper flash underneath to give it some sheen. And uh, to wrap it all up, using none other than Semperfly Nano Silk. This is 50 denier. And then for the eyes, a cool little monofilament trick. And uh, give it some durability with Golf Thinman UV Resin. So to begin with, this is probably the most technical part of this fly. Um, we're going to braid this uh, detached tail. It gives it a lot of movement in the water. And then the uh, braiding actually gives the tail a little bit more durability uh, to handle more than just a few aggressive fish takes. So you'll start that off pulling a little bit of olive and a little bit of light olive marabou plumes. And then I find it works best if you give it, um, just add a little bit of water or some saliva to it to really get those fibers to play nice. And then I just do a simple overhand knot in the tip of the tail section. Adjust your uh, Renzetti vise there to lock that knot into place. And then just like braiding your daughter's hair, we're going to take a few seconds here and give uh, the light olive and all of um, a nice tight braid. And then if it's a little bit scruffy, that's fine. Those fibers are gonna dance in the water. And then I use my hackle pliers to pinch that off and we'll save that for a few seconds from now. I'm gonna start our nano silk up the body and just get that secured. Trim away the excess using a razor blade, not your finest scissors as they will dull with this nano silk. And then there we have the braided detached tail which we will just capture and then adjust it to kind of your desired length there i find wrapping uh, a couple wraps underneath the tail as well just helps to kind of lock it in and then we're going to go and cinch up a little bit tighter on the thread as we wrap forward and trim away uh, the excess uh, feathers there nice and clean Go back and secure that in with a little bit more pressure so that it doesn't rotate around your hook shank. That looks pretty nice there. At this point, we're going to grab some Semper Wire. This is 0.2 millimeter in chartreuse color. Uh, lovely stuff to work with. It is non-tarnishing. It doesn't fade. Uh, adds some durability to the body. So just go and wrap that in until you get to the uh, about the bend of the hook shank. And here we're going to grab a little bit more select marabou plumes. Just a few fibers this will make our um, main body so you just want to catch that in by the the tips and then trim away the the excess fibers there make sure that looks nice and clean and is secured in there at this point we're going to just get those out of the way and here we're going to add some scud back so this is sow scud back 1 8th diameter this is olive color just capture that right by the eye of the hook a few securing wraps, and then on top of that, we're going to add some of the Semper Flash. This is the Mirage stuff, so it gives some cool sort of opal flash to this uh, the backside of this fly. And then here I'm going to show you one of my favorite little tricks for making mono eyes. You grab a little piece of 20-pound monofilament, hit that with a lighter. It's going to melt up to a, a cool little pair of eyeballs. As you uh, melt it with the lighter, the um, the outside parts of the eyes turn almost like an amber color, and then they fade to a green. So it's really cool for these patterns. It makes it super lifelike. And then while keeping that in your bead tweezers, I will wrap the thread around it, some figure eight wraps, 
make sure that that's nice and secure. You can adjust it as needed. Make sure that it's centered. That looks pretty good to me. And then at this point, we're going to do a securing whip finish so that that thread does not get knocked off here as I go ahead and wrap the body of this fly. So you grab all these uh, marabou fibers. I find it looks pretty scruffy if you give them a couple little twists there. And then it mates up perfectly with that detached braided tail. And as you see, you get some light olive, you get some olive in there. It makes it like a really cool sort of mottled look. And then we'll just secure the, uh, the ends of that marabou with your thread. Be careful not to trim away any of the other vital parts. Just get in there and clean that up. That looks pretty happy. What's nice with tying those um, mono eyes in is you can use that as kind of a, a thread keeper so that your thread doesn't pop out the, uh, the front of the hook and then just into the bobbin cradle there. And then carefully weaving the semper wire up the body. That's going to give it some durability and give it kind of a segmentation too, which is a really cool effect. There, that looks pretty good there. Just give it a few extra wraps to secure that wire in, and then you can go ahead and helicopter that out of the way. And then uh, the best part of this uh, fly is attaching some of the straggle string. So Semperfly makes this stuff. It's one of my favorite products to work with. The straggle string has like UV fibers in it as well, so it really stands out in conjunction with that opal flash sort of back section of this fly. They also make a straggle leg which has a little bit longer fibers and more um, natural duller looking colors which really look cool as well. So I'll just go ahead and talk about how I typically fish these uh, damselfly nymph patterns. So this detached tail pattern is uh, it's been tied by a number of different talented fly tires out there. It has quickly become one of my all-time favorite damselfly nymph flies. Um, so if I do see any damselflies, they're usually smaller and blue in color, and they'll be hanging around the shallows, uh, in the reeds, uh, climbing through the vegetation. So if I notice that, uh, chances are that the fish are keen in on these nymphs. Uh, so I'll go ahead and I'll fish this fly on either a uh, floating line with a long leader. You could use some sink tip lines, just get it under the surface film. Or a deadly uh, tactic is using a, a intermediate sink line, like a, a clear camo line or an aqualux line. Gets it down slowly and then I'll do some fast um, short strips and then a pause and if the fish are keen in on these damselflies they will go crazy for that. And so here what I've done is I've just wrapped that straggle string up the front of this fly imitating legs and I'll usually figure eight it around the eyes there to give it a real scruffy look and then fold back your scud back with the mirage semper flash underneath and then go ahead and with your bodkin you can pick out any of those leg fibers and and make it look really lifelike and increase a lot of the movement in the water and then i always like to go ahead and um, get a little bit of durability using some golf thinman uv resin so you don't need a ton just a little on the bodkin there to secure those thread wraps along the back side of this and then one of my favorite little tools to use is Semperfly's uh, rechargeable UV light. This thing is the bee's knees. I've tried quite a few UV lights, but this one stands uh, far and above the others. It's a great little light. And there you have it, guys. A little bit more of a technical tie for you, but this thing is super imitative. A lot of movement in this fly, and I've had some great days on the water using it. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hope you're able to pick up a few tips or tricks, and we'll see you on the water, guys.